Hey guys, welcome back to another video on this channel. The upgrade aquatic mod for Forge aims to improve oceans and rivers in Minecraft. The mod tries to offer unique and exciting content while expanding the world below the surface of Minecraft's oceans and staying true to the feel of vanilla Minecraft. There are new mobs, plants, items and more. So, let's dive in. Firstly, there are a few new great mobs included in the mod. The pike is a predatory fish that spawns in all biomes, often next to pickerel weed. The mob won't attack you unless you attack it. The fish can sometimes spawn with blocks or items of junk and treasure quality in its mouth, which can be obtained by killing it or when a pike drops an item to hunt a fish or collect a raw fish item. It will also grab items which are floating around in the water. As it is a predatory fish, it will hunt salmons, tropical fish and so on, by biting them until they die and then eating them. While eating a fish, it won't attack other ones. Pikes always drop bone meal after they finish eating a fish. The mob drops the raw pike upon dying, that can be consumed or cooked. The mob can also be captured in the water bucket. They actually have 21 different skins for different biomes, and there is an achievement for collecting all of them in a water bucket. The obsidian pike makes portal particles when right-clicked with a flint and steel, the supercharged pikes are really fast, spectral pikes make soul particles when eating, and muscle lunges are very big. Lionfish are neutral mobs that spawn in warm oceans, and they won't attack you unless you attack them. However, you should not get too close to them, because as you touch a lionfish, it will poison you, which deals a lot of damage. And if you hit the fish, it will defend itself of course, and attack you with its poison as well. The mob drops raw lionfish upon dying, which should not be eaten as it will give you strong nausea and poison effects. But you can cook the raw lionfish to make it edible. Lionfish can also be captured in a water bucket, but I wouldn't recommend putting a lionfish in a fish tank with other fish, as these mobs will kill some of the other fish. Freshers are hostile shark-like mobs which are spawning in cold oceans below Y level 30 that you should really watch out for because they are extremely strong. These mobs are blind so they might not spot you immediately and won't attack you right away. However, they are occasionally shooting sonar waves in order to find their prey. And if a fresher detects you with a sonar wave, it will charge at you, grab you and bite you with its large fangs, which deals a lot of damage. It is really difficult to escape the grip of the fresher once it started biting you. But if you damage the mob enough, which is not that easy because the mob will shake you, it will release its grip and let you go. Upon death, the mob can drop one or multiple fresher teeth. Fresher teeth can be crafted into bone meal, tooth blocks, walls and doors that automatically close a short time after opening them, and even a grey tooth lantern as well as a trident. If you encounter a fresher and you don't have really good equipment and maybe healing items with you, I would definitely recommend for you to flee, especially if it is a great fresher. The Great Fresher is basically the stronger and larger version of Normal Fresher. It only spawns in deep frozen ocean biomes below Y level 30 and uses the same attack techniques as the Normal Fresher but is much more difficult to defeat because it shakes you more, deals more damage and has more HP than a Normal Fresher. But you can still defeat it in the same way you defeat a Normal Fresher. The mob also drops fresher teeth upon dying. A really effective way of killing the fresher is a trident with the impaling enchantment, which increases the damage you deal against aquatic mobs. This will stun the fresher really quickly and make it let you go. Furthermore, you will be able to kill the mob much more quickly with this enchantment. Perches are friendly mobs, so they don't pose a threat to you and will not defend themselves. You can find them in swamps, where they are being hunted by pikes. They drop raw perch upon dying, which can be consumed or cooked and consumed afterwards. You can capture them in a water bucket as well. The Nautilus is another new friendly mob that simply swims around, won't defend itself, drops a Nautilus shell upon dying and can be captured in a water bucket. It spawns in ocean biomes below Y level 30. You can use a name tag on a Nautilus to change its skin. There is a large variety of appearances a Nautilus can take on and you can find a whole list of names in the description. Geese are new friendly mobs that don't drop anything upon dying. They can be bred using seeds. However, at the moment they do not spawn naturally, so you can't find them in survival mode. Flares are new mobs that are flying around like phantoms and will attack any mob that doesn't have insomnia, so they are the opposite to phantoms. If you have insomnia, phantoms will attack you, and if you don't have insomnia, flares will attack you. These mobs don't spawn naturally, but you can create them by throwing an insomnia potion on a phantom, which I will explain in detail later. They can drop phantom membranes upon dying. Squids and glow squids can now be captured in water buckets. Some vanilla mob drops are also changed by the mod. Guardians now drop their spine upon dying. 
This spine can be placed down and activated by a redstone signal. Touching an activated guardian spine will damage you like cacti. And as the spine is quite sticky, it might take 1 or 2 seconds to get away from it. The elder guardian spine, which is dropped by the elder guardian, works like the guardian spine. However, it will damage you more than a normal guardian spine and will give you mining fatigue as you are damaged by it, which makes it an extremely effective trap because players can't destroy the block that quickly. The Elder Eye, which is dropped by the Elder Guardian, is basically a sensor which can be activated by right-clicking on it. It can detect a player or mob up to 14 blocks away. The back of the block is basically the redstone output, which can be connected with redstone dust or any other redstone block. You can place the block as you want to detect mobs or players above it next to it or below it, which makes it really useful. The mod introduces a few new potions to the game. A potion of insomnia, which is created by corrupting a potion of restfulness using a fermented spider eye, will increase your level of insomnia by one day. And a potion of restfulness, which is created using cocoa beans, will do the opposite and remove one level or day of the insomnia effect, and thus preventing phantoms from spawning. You are also able to kill a phantom using a potion of restfulness, and a flayer using a potion of insomnia. Furthermore, you can turn a phantom into a flare using a potion of insomnia, and a flare into a phantom using a potion of restfulness. Using a raw lionfish, you can brew a potion of repellence. With this potion, you will poison any creature you touch, like it happens when a lionfish touches another creature. If you use a fermented spider eye on repellence potions in a brewing stand, you can brew a potion of vibing. This potion will let you heal any mob you touch, which is pretty cool. Coral reefs are also changed by the mod. Now you will be able to find many new types of corals as well as coral blocks, like finger corals, petal corals, star corals and so on, which are completing the color palette of corals. As with the normal Minecraft corals, all of them can be crafted into their corresponding coral blocks. There are also two new types of wood included in the mod. Driftwood that can occasionally be found floating around on water or on shores. It can also be obtained by fishing, pikes and wandering traders and river wood from river trees, which can be found close to rivers or shores. These wood types can be crafted into the common types of wood building blocks and items. On the river trees, a new type of fruit called mulberry can grow. This fruit can be farmed by right-clicking and can be crafted into pie, bread or jam. Four mulberry jam bottles can be crafted into a mulberry jam block, which is a really sticky and permeable block similar to cobwebs. It acts like another type of slime block that sticks to other blocks around it, except for slime blocks. If you want to build a mulberry farm, you can plant mulberries by right-clicking with one on the bottom of a leaf or river log. You can plant two mulberries in one block. If you want to remove one of the two mulberries planted in one block, simply shear the block. Blue and purple pickerel weed can be found on shores or at the side of rivers. They can be turned into dye or crafted into a block of pickerel weed. This block looks like a full Minecraft block. However, it is only a half solid block and you can move through the other half very slowly, like with a cobweb. Depending on how you place the block, you can slow down entities and let them partly sink in, while preventing them from jumping. Or you can create, for example, a secret entrance to a room. You are also able to boil pickerel wheat in a furnace to make it edible, which will also replenish your air reserves underwater. Or you can craft the boiled pickerel wheat into boiled pickerel wheat blocks, which are also only half solid, but not sticky like the normal versions. Beach grass, which can also be found on shores, can drop beetroot seeds, or can be crafted into beach grass patches, if you farm it using shears. Embedded ammonites can be found underground in beach and ocean biomes like ores, and they can be smelted in a furnace to receive nautilus shells. Flowering rushes, as well as pink and white sea rockets, can both be found on shores and the flowering rushes can be turned into pink dye, while the sea rockets can be turned into dye in a suspicious stew. The mod also adds bed rolls that can be crafted using leather and any type of wool. You can change their color by putting them together with the dye of your choice in the crafting table. Note that these bed rolls don't set your spawn point. Prismarine shards can now be crafted into prismarine rods, which can be crafted into prismarine rod bundle blocks or even a trident using treasure teeth. There are also a few new building blocks like a glass door and trap door, Furthermore, there are also new skewed blocks, which are crafted using skewts, as well as new glowing luminous prismarine blocks. Kelp can be used to craft kelpy cobblestone or stone bricks, as well as kelp blocks. Nautilus shells can now be used to craft coral stone, which is a type of block that can be turned into a colored coral stone block of a coral of your choice. You simply have to place the coral stone next to a living coral block, and after a few seconds or minutes, it will turn into the complementary coral stone block. Now you can place a redstone block next to that coral stone block to grow your own corals. 
You can turn an infested coral stone back into a normal one by shearing it. Now you can use a glow ink sack to revive dead corals by right clicking on them. With this mod you can build infinite sand and gravel farms. Simply place down magma or soul sand blocks, then put water above these blocks to create a bubble column, and then place cobblestone or sandstone directly above the water with the bubble column. Finally, there are a few items which are not obtainable in survival mode at the moment. For example jelly torches, which are cool glowing blocks similar to torches that can even be used underwater. There are also a few currently unobtainable kelp versions, which can be crafted into the complementary kelp block versions, and kelpie cobblestone and stone bricks. In my opinion, Upgrade Aquatic is an amazing vanilla expanding mod that really enriches Minecraft's oceans while keeping their vanilla feel. The mod doesn't add too much content and I really like that the mobs interact with each other and hunt each other. For me, vanilla Minecraft lacks some larger fish, so I really appreciate the content added by the mod and definitely recommend for you to check it out. Anyways, thanks for watching, if you don't want to miss any further reviews, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.